What is up everybody, Dan Dan the Fireman here. We're gonna be talking about the five best beginner naked motorcycles. Now, what is a naked motorcycle? It is a sport bike without the fairings and it's a little bit more upright seating, a little bit less aggressive feel. So it's gonna be really good for beginners uh, if you're looking towards more so the sport bike or you know what, what, what can I get? Before we jump into it, I want you guys to know that we do have a meetup planned February 1st. And when I say we, Yammy Noob is coming down. So Yammy Noob's coming down to Tucson, Arizona, and we're gonna have a meetup from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. All the details are in the description. So if you can make it, please do so. You don't have to bring your bike, you can drive and all these different things. There's not gonna be any group rides and stuff like that. So like I said, details in the description. So let's go ahead and jump into this one. So the first one is gonna be the Suzuki SV650. Now this is gonna be a liquid cooled 645cc four stroke 90 degree L twin engine, which, you know, as a beginner, it's like, what is that? At the end of the day, don't worry too much about it. We're gonna jump into the cool stuff. So one thing I really like about this is that it does have a low RPM assist feature that seamlessly adjusts engine speed during takeoff and low speed running. So it has a smooth power delivery to help eliminate the possibility of the rider stalling the motorcycle. That's really gonna be helpful when you're practicing your slow speed stuff out in the parking lot, which I highly recommend for all beginners. But it also helps you out when you're out doing advanced classes and you're doing a lot of slow speed stuff and you don't wanna have your engine just kinda of shut off because the engine's not getting enough fuel with your throttle. So this is really good for a beginner when it comes to parking lot stuff, you know, going in and out of your parking lot at work or getting it uh, out of your driveway and all these different things. So that's really gonna be good. So this is a really good bike and it looks badass. It does cost about $7,099. I don't know why they didn't do 7,100. The next one is gonna be the Kawasaki Z650. This is gonna come in with a non-ABS model about 6,999. I always recommend getting ABS, especially for beginners. It's a really good thing to have just in case you're, you fail with your progressive braking. Hopefully that's gonna catch so that you're not gonna lock up that front tire and then dump the bike like we see in a lot of these after action reviews that we do on this channel. One thing I really like about this is that it does have adjustable levers standard. So you can actually adjust it to where your hands can actually get a very good grip so that if you're having to apply the clutch for shifting or applying the front brake for progressive brake pressure, this is gonna be really helpful. Another thing that's gonna be really helpful is that it's gonna have a wide handlebar. And what that means is that you're gonna have really good steering inputs. Now you're gonna have really you know, uh, exaggerated inputs. Typically with sport bikes, they're super close and that's gonna be really difficult to do any type of actual direct steering for slow speed stuff. You're typically gonna get your hand stuck next to the gas tank on uh, sport bikes like that. With the wider grip, you're gonna have really good turning, really good turning, and it's more comfortable. That's one of the biggest things that I like about this. It does have an upright seating and the foot pegs are not necessarily rear set or mid controls, they're a little bit in between, but coupled with that upright seating, it's gonna help your back and it's gonna have you really good visibility. But since it's right below where you're seating, you're not having to you know, adjust your foot to swing out to grab the ground if you're at a stop. So that's really good to have. So you basically just kind of put your feet down and put your feet up. Really good for beginners. We already talked about this one in the sport bikes and you guys are saying, don't, why, 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 why? This is a naked bike, it's not a sport bike. Well, we're gonna talk about it here then. Uh, really briefly, but if you want to check out the five best sport bikes video, it's going to be linked in the description and at the end of this video. This is going to be the Yamaha MT-07. Like I said, we're not going to spend too much time on this, but it's going to have a 31.7 inch seat height now. That's a little bit higher for me because my inseam is about 30, so I know for a fact I'm going to have to go one or you know one foot to the left or the right. I can't do flat foot, so that might be a big problem, but the MT-07 is going to have really good styling and it's going to be something that you're going to start off as a beginner with some good power and then you're gonna grow into it and then you pretty much not wanna sell it. You're actually gonna love this thing for a very long time. I don't think there's really a reason to jump from the MT-07 to the MT-09 or the MT-10 unless you absolutely want that extra power. But at the end of the day, this is all the power you're gonna need, especially in town. And you can even take this on the interstate, no problem. So check this one out, really recommend it. So now we're gonna jump into the other ones. This is gonna be the Honda CB500F. Now there's a bunch of Honda CB500s. There's the R, there's, there's all these different kinds, but I chose the F because it has a lower price point and the, uh, the way the power delivery is a little bit different than the race model. This is gonna have a 30.9 inch seat height, so a little bit lower than the MT-07, and this is gonna be a little bit closer for me when it comes to flat footing both sides, especially if you get good boots with good soles that are you know, an extra inch. The one thing that I really like about this one is that it does come with a slipper slash assist clutch. So basically what a slipper clutch does is that it's gonna remove a lot of that jerkiness, so when you downshift coming to a stop, you ever feel like that rear tire goes like, 
it does that really quick when it's deceleration. Well, the slipper clutch is actually gonna allow it to where it doesn't do that. So you're still gonna decelerate, have some engine braking, but it's not gonna be a complete mismatch between the RPMs of that rear tire and the engine. So it's not gonna skid that rear tire coming to a stop, which can be dangerous. So this is why I included this on the Best Beginner Naked Bikes because it's gonna prevent a lot of that. So that's really good. So if you're actually looking for a bike outside of all these ones, see if it does come with a slipper clutch because it's just like ABS where if you accidentally grab too much, um, it's gonna do a, a nice little er, 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 er. It's gonna do small little things instead of a big long skid. But with a slipper clutch, it's gonna do the same thing. Without it, it's gonna possibly skid that rear tire. So it, it's like an ABS version for brakes versus you know, clutch stuff. Long explanation, whatever. This will come in at 6,499, and I chose this ABS model because the non-ABS model is only $300 cheaper. Really recommend just get the ABS model and call it a day. Now, this is the one that everybody uh, is, is definitely getting out there, is the Honda Grom. Now, there's also the Kawasaki Z125. Um, you can go either way, but I mean, the Grom is the Grom. So this is also a 30 inch seat height, uh, much like the other bikes. So it's actually kind of tall for me, but then you start to realize, oh, this thing's a little, pretty tiny and it's, it's a lot of fun and it's cheap too. So it's gonna come in at 3,399 and it does have the optional ABS. So if you're planning on actually uh, using this as a commuting bike, definitely get ABS. Um, if you're just gonna be messing around in parking lots, maybe even off-road with some knobby tires, you can probably get away with not having ABS or not. Uh, highly recommend having it though because since it's such a short wheelbase, it's somewhat easy if you're applying a lot of that front pressure to that front and, and grabbing those brakes, there's a good chance you're gonna either go over or dump the bike. Uh, but it's, it, it's one of those fun little bikes that you're gonna have a ton of fun, a lot of aftermarket parts. And it's a great thing to learn on because it's so small that you're not gonna do anything super crazy and you're gonna be learning the primary control. So you're gonna understand how to use the front brake, the rear brake with the pedal, uh, the shifting, all that stuff. You're gonna learn the throttle control on this bike and then if you ever wanna move up to a different bike, that set of skills, your skill set, will translate to other bikes. So it's always good to start on a small bike that for that reason and then move on to a bigger bike. But all the bikes on this list, you can easily start on as long as you ride within your ability, not the bike's ability. But if you want to ride to the max of the bike's ability, get the Grom and then translate that to a different bike. But like I said, guys, we have Yami Noob down here in Tucson. February 1st, so links in the description. Uh, we had a great chat uh, during the After the Ride podcast. It's gonna be, uh, well, I guess over on the other side. Check that out, it's, it, it was a lot of fun. We're gonna do another one when he's down here. With that said, hope you guys ride safe, be safe, and check out those bikes.